Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips to help you get the most out of these lessons. First of all, they're free. So you can watch it as many times as you need to understand the concept. Secondly, if I cover something and it's confusing to you still, hit your back button and look at it again. And third, when we come to a you try it problem, hit your pause key, try the problem on paper and pencil, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you enjoy yourself. Well, today we're going to talk about solving equations with addition and subtraction. What's that mean to solve an equation? What would it mean if somebody asked you to solve for x in the equation x plus 6 equals 16? Well, what they're asking you to do is to figure out what x equals. And how do you do that? Well, you want to isolate the x. You want to change the equation so that x is alone on one side and everything else is on the other side. That way it'll read x equals something. And that something will be the solution to the equation for x. x equals something. So what you want to do is move that 6 from the left side of the equation over to the right side of the equation. So on the left side of the equation, the only thing left is x, and it reads x equals something. Okay, so we want to get rid of that 6. What are we going to do? Well, here's the trick you use the inverse operation. You do the opposite of adding 6 to get rid of the 6. What's the opposite of adding 6? Subtracting 6. If you subtract 6 from x plus 6, you've got x plus 6 minus 6. Well, plus 6 minus 6 is 0. So it changes it to x plus 0. And x plus 0 is equal to x. So we've got x equals something. Have we solved our problem? x plus 6 minus 6 is just x. But wait a minute. It originally said that x plus 6 equals 16. If x plus 6 equals 16, then I don't think x can equal 16. Because 16 plus 6 is 22, and 22 doesn't equal 16. So unfortunately, we're not there yet. x plus 6 minus 6 does not equal 16, and we haven't solved the problem. Well, that's just because algebra is a little bit like the scales of justice. The scales are balanced when things are equal. If I had 15 equals 15, I know that that makes sense. The scales are balanced. Everything's even. But what if I added 1 to just one side of the equation? It would no longer be uh, balanced. It would not be equal. 15 does not equal 15 plus 1, and the scales have gone out of balance. Yeah, but I can bring the scales back into balance. If I add 1 to one side of the equation and add 1 to the other side of the equation, if I do the same thing, to both sides of the equation, then it's still an equation. 15 equals 15, and 15 plus 1 equals 15 plus 1. Well, what have we learned? Well, we learned if it asks to solve for x, we want to isolate x. We want x to be the only thing on one side of the equation, so it reads, reads x equals something. And then we've learned that if we want to get rid of something that's keeping x from being isolated, we need to do the inverse operation, the opposite operation. And we've also learned that if we do something to the left side of the equation, in order to keep it equal, we have to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. So how would we solve for x in the equation x plus 6 equals 16? Well, if we want to get rid of this plus 6, 
we do the opposite of plus 6, we minus 6 or subtract 6. And if we're going to subtract 6 from the left side of the equation, we need to subtract 6 from the right side of the equation. These two 6's cancel each other out, and then we add or subtract the 6 from the 16. Only x is left on the left, and it equals 16 minus 6, or 10. Oh, algebra's fun. It's just like a game you got to remember a couple of rules and then you solve problems and solve puzzles and, and that's just like a game. It really is fun. Well, let's try this game. Y minus 12 equals 6. What I want to do is solve for Y. I want to isolate Y so it says I want to rewrite the equation so it says Y equals something. In order to do that, I got to get rid of minus 12. Well, what am I going to do to get rid of minus 12? I'm going to do the opposite of subtracting 12. I'm going to add 12. And if I add 12 to the left side of the equation, like I did right there, then I have to add 12 to the right side of the equation as well. Well, I've got a minus 12 and a plus 12. They kind of cancel each other out, don't they? So that's going to leave just y on the left side of the equation and it's going to read y equals 6 plus 12. And 6 plus 12 is 18, so we've solved it. y equals 18 is the solution for y minus 12 equals 6. Now we can test that solution. Up here in the original equation it says y minus 12 equals 6. Well, y equals 18. We solved for that. So we can substitute 18 any place we see a y. So let's move that 18 up there and change the uh, original equation to 18 minus 12 equals 6. Does 18 minus 12 equal 6? Yeah, it does. So it works. We've checked our solution and it works. Now we did this solution by adding and subtracting horizontally, but most of you learn to add and subtract vertically. So let's try it a different way. Let's solve this vertically. Our original equation is y minus 12 equals 6. And we want to get rid of that minus 12, so we're going to add 12. And if we add 12 to the left side of the equation, we have to add 12 to the right side of the equation. Well now we can rewrite this because our minus 12 and our plus 12 cancel each other out. We've got just y on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation is 6 plus 12. And 6 plus 12 equals 18. So again it solves y equals 18. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, we want to solve this for x, which means we want to rewrite the equation so that x is isolated. And it's going to reread x equals something, and that something is the solution. So, how do we isolate that x? Well, we got to get rid of that plus 26. What's the opposite of plus 26? Minus 26. So, I'm going to subtract 26 from both sides of the equation to get rid of the plus 26. And when I do that, I've got just x on the left side of the equation, and on the right side of the equation I've got 14 minus 26. 14 minus 26 equals minus 12, so my solution is x equals minus 12. We can test that. We can substitute minus 12 for x in the original equation, and then it would read minus 12 plus 26 equals 14. Or you could rewrite that, 26 minus 12 equals 14, and 26 minus 12 is, in fact, 14. Did you get this one? I hope so. We're trying to solve for z. 
which means we have to rewrite the equation so z is alone on one side of the equation and it reads z equals something. So, how do we, uh, how do we go about that? Well, let's try to simplify life. I, I can combine and simplify plus 9 minus 11 and rewrite this equation as z minus 2 equals 14. Now, I need to get rid of that minus 2. And I'm going to get rid of it by doing the opposite of subtracting 2. I'm going to add 2. And if I add 2 to the left side of the equation, in order to keep it equal, i got to add 2 to the right side of the equation. So now, my 2's are going to cancel out. And it's going to read z equals 14 plus 2. Or z equals 16. Well, in order to solve this problem, it might be helpful if we CUCC'd the uh, word problem. So let's do that. Your father is 10 inches taller than your mother, and I'm going to circle the 10 inches because that's a number. Your mother is 5 feet 1 inch tall. Now I'm going to underline the question, how tall is your father? And we'll call that F. We'll create a variable called F which will represent how tall your father is. And the rest of this is just explaining how they want you to do this. It says write an equation to solve the problem and then solve it. Well, we're limited to only three things now. We only have to look at an F, a 10 inches, and a 5 feet 1 inch. And we have to put that together so it makes sense. So, we know your father is 5 inches taller than your mother. So if we had your father's height, which we know is which we're going to call f, and we subtracted 10 inches, that would equal your mother's height. f minus 10 inches equals 5 feet 1 inch. Now to solve this, I need to get rid of that minus 10 inches. And I'm going to do that by doing the opposite of subtracting 10 inches. I'm going to add 10 inches. And I have to do that to both sides of the equation to keep it equal. So now on the left, the minus 10 inches and the plus 10 inches cancel each other out and leave just f. And on the right, I've got 5 feet 1 inch plus 10 inches, which equals 5 feet 11 inches. That's our lesson on solving equation with addition and subtraction. Now let's go test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet Solving Equations with Addition and Subtraction. Try that worksheet and then after you've done that go back to Master Math and try the quiz on Solving Equations with Addition and Subtraction. I hope you had a really good time. I enjoyed being with you today and I hope you come back again real soon. See ya.